slide count is 51, but uh, we only, I only have 15 minutes. But I promise uh, I'll I'll keep this keep this very quick. So essentially, my um, my research is is uh, made up of different um, different different problems in stochastic mechanics in stochastic mechanics and statistical physics that uh, were merged together to get this uh, problem. So it, so here are the different problems that uh, I merged together to get this specific problem. First is ran the, the problem of the random walk, as you all know. It's coined by um, Carl Pearson. Uh, and here's a simple implementation of a random walk in two degrees shown in figure two. So we describe, a, describe this uh, simple random walk by uh, taking a die, a, a four-sided die, and the die Rolling the die determines at which direction the walker would go in this uh, two-dimensional plane. We can actually extend that further by taking, uh, by extending that plane into a graph. So a graph is a structure made out of nodes and edges shown here in figure three. So the red dots are the nodes while the black lines connecting e these dots are your edges. Uh, when you're Instead of having a die that's const that has a constant number of sides, uh, you would change this die at each point, at each red, at each of these red dots. So how would you change them? You would change them by increasing or decreasing the number of sides of this die depending on the out degree, quote unquote, out degree of the node, which uh, refers to the number of edges that lead out of these of these nodes. So the out degree is given by this symbol, uh, by k sub i plus. Well, the probability for the walker to move to its adjacent nodes is given by its inverse. Now we want to compute for these two, um, these two quantities that uh, relate to random walks and graphs. First is first passage time, or also called hitting time. This is the number of steps for a walker starting at node i to reach a target node y, while the other one is cover time, which is the number of steps it would take for the walker to reach all the nodes in the graph. And then we extend this another, uh, even further by considering that the random walk would reset. So resetting would mean that the walker has a probability to move back to its, or, uh, to its initial position at any point during the walk. So here in our figure, we have a one-dimensional random walk. And at, um, at some point in time, at, uh, there is a probability for the walker to move back to its initial position, shown by these red dots, red dotted lines in the figure. So what, um, what are possible applications of uh, resetting random walks? Well, we could simulate ecosystems in biological oh, one, behavior. I, 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 had a, I had a question for you. Um, Sorry. Uh, regarding the resetting, is there some a threshold on the time scale one puts for it to go back to its initial position? Oh, for this specific problem, there's no specific threshold. There, there's just a probability for it to go back. Uh, so, okay. So there's a set happen, probability. I see, I see, I see. And it can happen over a, a range of time scales then? Yes. Okay. Yeah, in Thanks. the typical oh, yeah. model, uh, you assume it's a Poissonian process. So it's an exponential. Uh -huh. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Right R. Typical model. I see. So um, possible applications of resetting random walks would be with um, simulating ec ecosystems. Um, uh, optimizing search processes and algorithms, describing diffusive processes, uh, neural spiking activity, and back to square one mechanics in board games, for example. So we extend this another time by considering continuous time random walks. So continuous time, this means that the walker is subjected to a waiting time. So it waits for a physical amount of time before taking a step. 
So this waiting time is uh, obtained from an independent random distribution. So now we move on to our uh, formulation of the problem. So we begin with a graph G. And uh, from this graph G, we obtain a transition matrix capital M here. And from and this uh, transition matrix is a uh, matrix of probabilities given by this equation one here. It's dependent on the out degree of the node. So we have this simple example here, a four node graph uh, in figure six. This has the corresponding uh, transition matrix in equation two. Now we want to include resetting um, on, this, uh, on this graph here in figure six. To do that, we have to modify the transition matrix as well, since you're modifying the graph. So uh, to get the, the transition matrix for a resetting random walk, we take this, uh, these conditions from equation three. And from our example earlier in figure six, we have now figure seven that demonstrates a uh, res re resetting random walk where the walker starts at node three. So this has a corresponding transition matrix given by equation four. Now uh, we extend this to continuous time. First, we suppose that the walker moves within a physical time t and t plus delta t. Uh, this waiting time is obtained from an independent and ident identically distributed variable phi, uh, where we, we, for this problem, assume it to be exponentially distributed given by equation phi. So from these two distributions here, pi of n t and capital phi of n t minus t prime, where pi of n t is the number of steps taken by time t from taken from t by time t sorry and capital phi n t minus t prime is the probability that exactly n steps were made by this difference of time difference here we obtain this um uh simplified distribution since we assume that small phi is exponentially distributed and from here we obtain the probability mass function uh, the continuous probability mass function for continuous time random walks given by equation nine. So this small p of n here, this is the discrete time counterpart of the probability mass function. So what we'll do is we solve for this small p of n for hitting time and uh, for first passage time and cover time. So now we move on to first passage time. Um, to do that, Sorry. So we have two minutes, you know, for oh. two minutes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, so we compute for first passage time by modifying this graph, uh, the graph once again, and by modifying the transition matrix. And we obtain these two um, cumulative distribution functions and probability mass functions. And that essentially, again, modifies the graph and modifies the transition matrix. And we obtain these, these plots. We can, use, we can use the uh, equation earlier for continuous time to simplify this and obtain a continuous uh, first passage time with the corresponding cumulative distribution function. And we, they, they have these plots as well. Now moving on to cover time, we first discussed the concept of first passage time of union of events, which means that uh, the walker has to reach, to hit, all the nodes in the graph individually for it to, of course, cover. So you take this union of hitting all of the nodes in the graph so that you would get the, uh, you would get the eventual, um, eventual expression for the cumulative distribution function of cover time. So we have this, um, these two plots here for, CD, for the CDF and PMF of cover time. Since, of course, these, these are just very simple graphs, um, it's not, uh, there's not much of, uh, of um, more uh, unique behavior. So we tried this actually uh, on, we tried this actually on randomly generated graphs because of 
course, uh, real life systems uh, consider most important that uh, this formulation here uh, in equation 20 is not actually that efficient if you increase the number of nodes in the number of, of on the number of nodes in the graph. So we actually formulated an, appro an approximation for, to this um, equation, and we found um, alternative alternative um, computations for obtaining the cover time for graphs that have a specific uh, configuration. So we considered the biased path graph, biased circular graph, and the complete graph as well. So the, these have um, different, um, different formulations for cover time that are much more efficient than this more exact equation here in equation 20. But this is nice because we have a baseline comparison uh, using this inclusion exclusion of multiple events. So uh, all in all, um, in my research, we have discussed the effects of adding a resetting mechanism to the CDF and PMF of first passage and cover time. Uh, as I just discussed quickly earlier, we've applied an approximation uh, on the expression of cover time and we found um, alternative um, alternative formulations for cover time for the biased path, biased circular, and complete graph. And finally, we've, we've uh, devised computational methods that will compute for the CDF, or cumulative distribution function, and pr probability mass function of random walks with stochastic resetting on the graph. So we've made uh, we've made a method that would accommodate um accommodate increase uh, an increasing amount of nodes but of course again um without using the approximation that this would become more and more um inefficient so we've uh, we've concluded that um uh adding a reset mechanism affects the mean first passage time and cover time depending on the initial position of the walker uh, we found out that it generally increases the mean first passage time and cover time as you increase the resetting probability, which is expected. And the second one is an odd even pattern was almost always seen in the discrete probability mass functions. And this is dependent on the uh, topology of the graph and the shortest hit distance possible. So that's all for my talk. I think um so now uh if anyone is interested to ask questions hello 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 can i ask a short question we cannot hear you ali i'm sorry ali naji we can't hear you can you hear me now yes yes, yeah, oh, yes. We are, yeah, we are at 13 minutes. We can, we can accommodate one quick question, a real quick one. And someone had one. Who was I, that? I ask if I can ask a short question. Ah, go on, go on. Yeah, um, Mariam. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, sorry, do you know uh, what the distribution is, the distribution of the cover time you showed? Oh, yeah, the, you show, yeah, this one, yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, what, the, what uh, was the question? Do you know the, what, the what sort of distribution it is? Um, well, it's dependent heavily on an exponential distribution. So you have these very uh, long tails here that would um, that would actually uh, approximate sort of an, uh, an exponential distribution. But it doesn't well. look but like gamma, right? It's not a gamma. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we can uh, continue over the 